You may be seated. We are very thankful that the good Lord has given us a cool evening for this service. The uh, cloudy weather is uh, predicting thunderstorms tonight, and it's a nice, cool evening. We thank the Lord for that. I am very grateful for what our Lord has done in this little five days gathering here at Lake Port, and for the fine fellowship that we have enjoyed with my friends, associates, and myself, of your fine cooperation, your love, your gifts, your support. We just simply don't don't have words to express what we think about it. And I asked the boys as I come in, the ushers were uh, out there at the back, uh, was counting the the evening offering, and I just asked them uh, so I'd know for sure if there was sufficient funds to pay all the bills. And they said there was. So thank you very kindly for your support. And they said there was enough left that they put a, a love offering for the foreign mission. God bless you for that. Someday, you may not see it here, but someday in the other land, you'll find out if God helps me to get back overseas, them souls that saved will be credited to you. Maybe you are not called to go, but you can help someone who is called to go, and together the rewards will be shared in glory. And when you see over there, like I had the vision, and see that then people walk up to you and where all things are made perfect, throw their arms around you and say, Dear brother, if you hadn't have helped that night in the meetings, Brother Branham couldn't have went and I wouldn't have been saved. But because it's you help. Now what would money do you any good there? See? So I know it's a sacrifice. It's, it really is because times are not good like they used to be. But, but I tell you, friends, if you could only see the condition overseas, Every American, no matter if he's a beggar on the street, he's a millionaire to what some of those people are. You just don't realize how poor those people are in Indian around. They're the poorest of poor. When I go there every evening and see them packing out those people on those just a white thing, sheet or canvas sewed over them, take them up to a big salamander and dump them in. They don't know who they are. They just died on the street, beggar. And there's no John 14 and across the other side and beautiful songs sang and flowers and funeral services. No, it's just simply uh, the best way they can uh, cremate them, get rid of them, that's all. So those people are people who Jesus died for, and they've got just as much right to know about God as we have. When I come home and look around and see the big fine churches and and the fine dress people, and and we, and then I look, go over there and look around, and see them poor little fellows laying there starving to death, and never even know there was a God. And you say a God, you say what God? <laughs> Thousands of them, you know. So they don't know. And then just give them a pamphlet or tell them about another God. That won't work. The missionaries has found that out. That won't work. They've got to see something visible that they can lay hold of. I was talking at a Juanus not long ago speaking, and it happened to be that the man that ordained me in the Missionary Baptist Church was present. I'd just gotten back from Africa, and I was telling him, I said, speaking about their conditions in Africa and how their economics was balanced and, and unbalanced, rather, and, and how that... Um, the natives and how they were getting along and told them there was coming an uprise just as sure as the world. The communistic party is getting in there and starting it, so there will be an uprise. And uh, so, and I, how I felt about it and talking about the tribes, the native tribes, and I described the little bushmen and uh, the different ones and how they would eat just anything they could find, no matter if it had maggots in it, that's just more meat, so it didn't bother them. So then, and these mosquitoes hanging on their legs, that's malaria mosquitoes, not this kind that buzzes around and says, you're my cousin, you know, and 
rams a stinger. <laughs> They're not hypocritical. They just lie on there and you got malaria. But it won't hurt them. They build up inoculation through the years. And I said, well, if one lied on us, we'd die. If we lived, we'd have malaria for at least 15 years. And you ever seen anybody with malaria fever? You sure wouldn't want it. Pass out for days after days in a coma and everything. And then it's very hard. Then I said, then, um, and eating, and there was a doctor sitting there, and he said, well, Reverend Branham, he said, those people are not human, you see. I said, oh, I beg your pardon. Doctor, I said, they're just as much human as you and I. Absolutely. I said, the only thing that we just got it all and keeping it from them. And I said, you give me the wildest tribe in Africa is the Bushmen. They didn't even know they were human themselves. The English government found out, you know how they found out they were human? They run into a little place like a little bunch of bushes and they start shaking like that and there's nothing. Look all around, everything just disappears. Look out in the sand, a few little dark heads moving like this, they cover themselves up in sand, watching to see which way you went. And the only way they know they were human, many years ago, the first way they know they were human, would you like to know how they know it? They had dogs. A dog won't habitate with nothing but a human being. It will not live with nothing but a human. And that's how the English government knew that they were human. Now, you give me one of them little boys that's born when he's only two days old or six months old. Let me have him, a little bushman. He doesn't know his father, his mother, none of his tribe, know nothing but just kill and eat. And when he's 18 years old, he's smart, educated, just as shrewd as he can be. See, he's got a mind. He can think. He's got a soul. But you can pump all into an animal you want to, and you'll never make him think. He can't think. He's got no soul. He is human. Then, after them saying that, it kind of stepped on my toe a little bit, because Jesus died to save that little bushman. He's saying he died to save me. And it's my duty. It's our duty to see that he gets the gospel. God's going to hold us responsible for that. We don't take it to him. Yes, sir. God will require our hands. You know, the watchman on the wall, if he doesn't warn, then the blood's required at his hand. And then the doctor, we was talking a little bit, and the minister raised up, and he began to say about the mis uh, his missions over there. And um, he was the one who said that I was going to turn out to be a holy roller. And uh, I said, Doctor, you know, a few years ago, you told me the night that I saw that angel up there, you asked me if, if I hadn't been eating some red pepper and had a nightmare. And I said, if that's the attitude of the Baptist Church, I give up my fellowship right now with it. See, I said, because God called and it will be so. It said, you with a grammar school education is going to take a gospel overseas when thousands of missionaries has got diplomacy and... And I said, I don't care what they got, God's sending me. And he said, how are you going to do it? I said, that's up to God to do it. It isn't me. It's up to him. I'm just telling you the truth. I said, do you remember that, sir? I said, I want you to know, I met our missionaries over there. I'll tell you the strength of it. Here come the natives in, packing a mud idol under his arm with a tag on him, a Christian. And I said, what about that Sidney Smith, the mayor of Durban? He said... I can speak that one's language there, said he's got a tag as a Christian, packing a mud idol, sprinkled in animal blood. Said, let's ask him. Said, he's a Shungai. I can speak the Shungai language. I said, said, call him anything you want to. I said, Thomas, I thought that'd be a good name. I said, Thomas, are you a Christian? Oh, yeah. Yep. Spoke in his language, interpreted. He's a Christian. I said, what are you packing that idol for? Oh. He said, uh, if, uh, if Amalia... Uh, the Amalia means the unseen force like the wind. If Amalia fails, the unseen God, this one won't. <laughs> That's a Christian, you know. This one won't fail. And I, and I said, well, how do you know that? He said, well, his daddy packed this same idol, and one day the lion got after him, and he sat down, built up a little fire, and said the prayer the rich witch doctor told him, the lion run away. And uh, I said, I'm a lion hunter. And I know one thing, that any animal is scared of fire. The prayer of the witch doctor didn't run it away. The fire run it away. It's afraid of the fire. Oh, well, you'd play safety first and pack that anyhow. <laughs> That's Christianity. Go out there, a lot of missionaries, when they bring them in, put them down the diamond mine 1,700 feet under the ground, 
to work their taxes out. They come back out and they have to dance every once in a while. You know, they have a dance. Missionaries go down and give out tracts to a man that don't know which is right and left hand. Yep. I said, what happened? What you call fanaticism, what you call the holy roller, I've seen 30,000 of them break their idols on the ground and receive Jesus Christ. Naked women covered their arms and walked away from the place. I said, that's what they're looking to see. They don't care about some little pamphlet. Their God's got just as much power as any other one you talk about. See? But when it comes to something they can see that'll dumbfound their gods and stop their witch doctors and paralyze them in their tracks and see, then they believe that there is a God that can act. That's the gospel that the heathen has to have. That's all. Our, our education and ethics will not work with the heathen. He's got to see something. He's, he's got to know it's right. Same thing in India. We found out one of the magazines packed the article just recently when our honorable brother Billy Graham was challenged by that Mohammed and Billy tucked down. Now, I, I don't blame him. I would have done the same, but I would have, as a Christian, said, that's not my line of preaching. I preach salvation. You believe that God in Ishmael was the son of Abraham, which he was, the blessings. Let me talk to you on what I know about. I can prove to you that at Isaac, through Isaac come the blessing and not through Ishmael. If I'd been a doctor of divinity like he was, I would have challenged him on that. But I'd say, I do not have gifts of healing and things, but we got brethren in the Christian religion, Oral Roberts and so forth, that can be brought on the scene right now, can produce it, and it is the truth. I'd have held up for my standard of Christian religion. But then a, a, new, a paper come out, you see it in the Herald of Faith. It said, why didn't he challenge the meeting? What about down there at, at Durban, South Africa that afternoon? When the Mohammeds are sitting there and saw the acting, when that Mohammedan woman come on the platform, the Holy Spirit told her, said, you're a Mohammedan. Why'd you come to me? She said, I thought you could help me. And I said, did you ever read the Bible about what Jesus did? I know the secrets of their heart. Yes. I said, what do you think about that? Well, she said, um, I believe that uh, Jesus uh, uh, got on a horse and rode up in the glory. Went up in the glory. He's a prophet. I said, no, he was crucified, died, and rose again, and his spirit lives here today. I don't know about that. I said, what if he returns and does the same thing that he did then? Would that prove it to you if he'll act right here through us the same way he did when he was here on earth? She said, yes. I said, did you ever read the New Testament? Many times. And I said, well then, if he will reveal to me who you are, what you are, and what you're here for, and what you've been, and what's going to happen to you, will you accept it? She said, yes. Thousands of Mohammedans sitting out there. And I said, how many of you Mohammedans will accept it? And when the interpreter said it, hands went up, and the Holy Spirit began to move and told her who she was, where she come from, what doctor she went to, what his name was, all about it like that, and said she had a cyst on the ovary and she was healed at that time. The glory of God fell in 10,000 Mohammedans accepted Jesus Christ as personal Savior. And yes. That afternoon, I don't know how many more come, they estimated there are 10,000. And when that afternoon, when that boy, not even mentally right, led with a chain around his neck, when the Holy Spirit told him how he was born, and he's born that way, told his mother and father, who was sitting out in the audience around 150, 200,000 people, and said, your brother, thinking of him, He's out there in the audience. He was riding on either a white goat or a, white, or a yellow goat or a dog. Hurt his knees. He's walking on two clubs. But thus saith the Lord, he's healed. And about a city block up through the fairgrounds, here he come packing these clubs, screaming, jumping up and down as far as he could heal. Taking us about a half hour to get him quietened. Then when I look back and I seen that man in the vision standing there on his feet, normally as he could be, he walked with his hands and feet like that. Not even mentally right. When I talked to him, he wanted to do a a dance for me, a tribal dance. And then I look and I see him stand there, I know that was it. <laughs> when you see that vision, it won't fail. Then I know the audience, I said, how many here? Here's a man here, a poor crippled well, man, look what condition he's in. There's been a British doctor there, on a little cross-eyed boy, he said, Mr. Branham, what did you do to that baby? I said, never done nothing. I said, never even prayed for him. They slipped him up on the platform, said, I put him on the platform. Said he was cross-eyed. When he come by here, he goes off over there and he isn't cross-eyed. Said, you done, did you hypnotize that baby? I said, doctor, did the English uh, Medical Association give you uh, license to practice medicine? 
what about you British you're doing all that hypnotism? I said, why don't you straighten his eyes? I said, if hypnotism was straighten eyes, you fellows better start practicing hypnotism. I said, you know what he was cross-eyed there? And Brother Baxter come up and was taking him away. And I said, let him alone. Let him talk. And he said, uh, you're going to cause a riot out there now. They're taking time with that man. And I said, uh, well, just a minute. He said, I want to ask you something. He said, I believe there's a God. He's in them lilies, and all you women ought to see them lilies. Cow lilies, 18 inches across like that. Beautiful yellow and white ones, wild, growing around the jungle. And their uh, platform is all full of them. And I said, he said, there's God, some kind of a life in that lily. But is he tangible enough to make that cross-eyed boy eyes come straight? I said, you picked him on the platform, took him off over here. He said, is that God present? I said, yes, sir, he's here now. He walked right out to the microphone, great big hanging mic like that, because we had to speak for two or three city blocks each way and back that way up city block or more, thousands of people times thousands. He said, I now accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. When I met him at, Derb, at uh, Johannesburg when he was leaving, I heard somebody hollering, Brother Branham, at, you know, Cockney English talk they have, run out there on a, on a ramp when they had lines drawn and the, whole, the police lined up and down like this so the people couldn't get out there. And they brought me up in a car and set me off and I got out there and he said, Brother Branham, he broke through and ran out there, threw his arms around me, began speaking in tongues. He had been called to the mission field. <laughs> oh, how I like to tell Dr. Davis and them that. <laughs> I said, what you call fanaticism, one more soul to Christ in one meeting, and the tens of thousands times millions of dollars we put on missionaries for the last 50 years in Africa. That's right. That's it. Let's make it count, brother. These dollars belong to God, and let's make it count for the kingdom of God, to people who really need it. That boy, when he stood up, I told him, I said, stand up. Jesus Christ has made you whole. He didn't know what I was talking about. And the interpreter told him he still wanted to do a dance. I got a hold of a chain and lifted him like this, had a collar around his neck like an animal. And when he raised up, he was so completely, first time in his life ever stood on his feet, the big tears on off his black belly like that, and there he stood mentally right, standing on his feet. Thousands times thousands fell on the ground. And they estimated, they estimated 25,000 outstanding miracles took place right then. No more had to be prayed for. They got off of cots, stretchers, wheelchairs, everything else, and the next morning, there were seven big van loads, these great big long African vans, piled full of crutches and wheels, chairs, and they was coming down the street. Sidney Smith, the mayor of Durban, comes to the window and said, look out the street. Here they was, been in tribal wars, peaceful with one another, walking down the streets, saying all things are possible and only believe. Oh. <laughs> we can't have that kind of a meeting in America. We know too much. We know more about it, you see. We're too smart for that. <laughs> Go ahead, we just miss the blessings, that's all. We, now, you people can have that, sure. You can see it happen here. But I mean the nation like that is there. God bless you. Brother Kopp, are you here tonight? Uh, Brother uh, Kopp, uh, Brother Leroy Kopp, he's been here in a meeting. I wanted to compliment him on that article he wrote, The Jews Seek Signs. He was talking about my ministry in there. And if you're here, Brother Kopp, and listen to my voice, I uh, surely, I'm coming to Israel. That's what the Jews wants to see the sign of the prophet. They believe the Messiah will be a prophet. They still believe it. How many ever heard of Louis Petrus? Sure you did, the head of the Stockholm Church, Philadelphian Church, greatest Pentecostal move in the world. And he sent a million young, uh, New Testaments down. How many ever seen the Look in Life magazine showing them airplanes coming in, packing those Jews from down in Iran, all down in there, just about two or three years ago? That's where they got the article three minutes before midnight. Now, when they give them testaments, they read from the back to the front, and you know how the uh, Yiddish is wrote, and they said, if this be the Messiah, he promises, let us see him do the sign of the prophet. The Messiah will be a prophet. Let us see him do the sign of the prophet, and we'll receive him. Oh, my, that got my heart stirred. Right on the same grounds where the Holy Ghost fell the first time. You can't have intellectuals. You ain't chopping God in four or five pieces and giving him to a Jew. He's got to know he's got a God. So then, so he, the intellectual will never work with him. No, sir, he's got to know it. And so then I thought, won't that be wonderful if I draw about a 500 of them together out there and say, go out among you. Bring some man up here. See if Messiah still is the prophet. 
and right on that same ground where they accepted the Savior, then asked them to raise their hands and receive the Holy Ghost. What a time. You know what? That will end the Gentile dispensation. The gospel will go to the Jews. They'll missionary their, their people with it. Israel is a nation. We're all nations. But Israel is a nation, and the kingdom will return back to Israel someday. As Isaac said to Joseph, the vine will come back over the wall someday. That's right. Now, thank you very much, each one of you, for your kindness, all your fine cooperation. I want to thank the full gospel businessman's chapter for, I believe this is three, two or three times straight, they sponsored me being here. The fine cooperation of you ministers, God ever be with you all. May the chapter grow. May your churches grow. May the Lord get glory out of all that's done or said. I have to leave early in the morning now for Tacoma, and then from there over to Yakima, and I'm waiting for the time to get overseas just as soon as I possibly can to make a world tour amongst the outcasts of the Europe and Asia and the East and, uh, and the Far East and so forth to preach the gospel. If I happen not to get back again, I'll meet you across the border, young man. If you go and I get back again, to see you, I hope I will. But if you go before I get back then, I still want to tell you, I'll meet you across the border with the same testimony I got now. Jesus saves and heals. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God ever bless you. If I can be a benefit to you, help, drop me a card, letter, or anything. If you, here's prayer calls laid up here. If you don't have one up here tonight, you want one, just write me, Post Office Box 325, Jeffersonville, Indiana. Put one in your Bible on Acts 19, case of emergency, lay it on your sick and afflicted. No charge to it, not a thing. Sometimes people send me a little uh, money to help me pay for stamps. I pay hundreds of dollars a week for stamps. But they sometimes they, you don't have to. That's not necessary. But if you do, that's what uh, they do with it. And it's all controlled through the tabernacle. There's nothing comes to me. It's all through the Branham Tabernacle. That's where it's always been. I've always testified to you back and forth many times that all remunerations from the... I get a salary and all the remunerations from the meetings goes into the tabernacle and it's used for foreign missions. That's right. To help spread the gospel for nothing else but spreading the gospel. That's all. And the Lord bless you. And I want to ask you a favor before I start to preach to you just for a little while. I promise to pray for everybody with a, a card and I think we got several here. Billy give out a whole full bunch of them a while ago, he said. So I want to run them through the line and pray for them. And now we want to get a little something to build up some faith. How many of you will pray for me, somebody who really needs it? Thank you. As I go, I'm just in a change now between one ministry and the other. And it always starts a little something. And now I, I'm, I'm waiting on the Lord. And you be sure that you pray for me. I really need it. Brother Rose, did you give your testimony here about how God has healed you and things? You should have done that. And it's a great testimony. We love this brother. He's my wife scared to death of him. <laughs> the only man that ever got her on the platform. She's sitting on her little backward, timid. She don't even want me to say she's in the meeting, you know. And then very bashful, and Brother Rose said, We got Sister Branham the other night. Walk right up on the platform. She said, I'm scared to death of that man. <laughs> If there's any praise to go to the Branham family, let it go to her. She's the one that deserves it, my wife, one of the finest Christian women I know in the world. She's among the elect, I'm sure. God ever bless her gallant soul, her reward be great on the other side. Now before we approach the word, let's approach the author by prayer. How many wants to be remembered tonight as you raise your hand? Our Heavenly Father, we are taking time. We don't know what will happen between now and the next time we meet. We may be across the river in the other land. If that be our lot, Lord, then may we all be present that day. I pray thee, most gracious God, that there will not be one person missing on that day. May everyone be there. Every person here tonight, every sinner may be saved. Every saint may continue on holding out until the end comes. May the backslider 
come back into fellowship again. Let him know that he's not gone. He's just slid away by his sins and the slime of the devil's talk has slipped him off the highway. God is willing tonight to bring him back. Bring fire in the church, Lord. Holy Ghost fire. Heal the sick and afflicted. Bless those who are needy. Every hand that went up, Almighty God, you know every need they have. You're precious in my heart. And if they're precious to my heart, how much more precious are they to your heart? For you gave your life for them. And in return, Lord, you anointed me and sent me out to preach glad tidings of this good message of the Lord Jesus to them by showing signs and wonders of his resurrection and his soon appearing. We thank you for this, Father, and we pray that the night when the service is over, there will not be one sick or feeble person among us. We are so happy tonight, Lord, for many wheelchairs, four or five of them set here at the beginning. We don't see them tonight. We know that some of them is walking around. Some of them has testified of their healing. People on crutches, those who are sick and afflicted, stomach trouble, heart trouble, are now enjoying good health. That means so much to me, Lord, so much to them, to know that we see the signs of the king in the camp. Grant, Lord, that he'll always remain with us, and we'll love him and serve him until we see him face to face. Bless the words now that we read, and may it be a lamp or light unto our path to guide us closer to him. We ask in his precious name, amen. Let us turn tonight to two scriptures now selected for the closing service. One of them is Luke, the first chapter, and the other is is Matthew twenty four thirty five. Let us read begin reading Luke in the first chapter of Luke, beginning at the twenty sixth verse. Now listen close as we read. And in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. The angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her heart, in her mind, what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Praise be to God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? The angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Mary said, Behold, the hands made of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Matthew twenty four thirty five, Heavens and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Now I want to speak tonight, Lord willing, upon the unchangeable word of God. 
I wonder if Minor Argenbright is in the building. Brother Argenbright. I have seen him at a couple of the meetings, and I had a message for him, but I uh, believe, oh yes, I want to be sure to see you, Brother Argenbright. I want to meet you October the 20th. <laughs> he understands that language. Why they ever call this man minor, I don't know. I will disagree with his father and mother only unless it would be in his statue, because he's got a heart like a giant. <laughs> How many knows Brother Argon right? I don't say this in his presence, I was going to say it if he wasn't here. Fine brother. And his sweet little Irish wife. I've been in their homes, I've been with him in the darkness and the places. A mighty sweet, fine Christian couple. I believe that she's from around near somewhere here. She was in the meeting too. I don't know whether she's here tonight or not. Everybody that knows her, she's a sweetheart to all. To her son-in-law, our children, all the neighbors, everything on what we call Zion's Hill down there, she's the sweetheart of the hillside. So we are glad that Brother Argenbright is numbered among those who are redeemed, and our sister Argenbright. May the Lord bless them greatly. Now, it was about sunup. I suppose it was a, a pretty morning. It must have been along about this time of year, about July. The baby was born in April. I know tradition says December, but that's totally impossible. That's a creed. He couldn't have been born in December. Shepherds on the hillside, six or eight foot of snow there in that time. So he was born in April, and all young life usually comes forth along that time. She was on her way to the well. And as a little maid strolled along the street with the, the little crock with two handles on it under her arm, she was walking to get the morning water, and it must have been very early, and it was on Monday, I suppose, and maybe she had to make several trips because usually Monday is wash day. Is that right, sisters? That's the way it is at our house and every day. <laughs> so with a bunch of children. But usually they call it Blue Monday because of the women washing on Monday. I used to call it Blue Monday because I had to pack the water for about a half a mile from a spring, poured in an old, big old kittle outside and then chopped wood and laid it on. Oh my, I'm glad they got hydrants nowadays. <laughs> and then as she was making her way down the street, she was thinking, of the day before, of the, the subject that had been talked about by her and her betrothed husband, her engaged husband, as they sat on the porch, as her custom was, after the services of the morning as they went to church there in Nazareth, and they uh, went out, sat out on the porch after the midday meal, and Joseph, her to-be husband, was a carpenter, and he built fine buildings. But now he was building one that had a, had a special care to this one because he was taking his pretty little bride to this one. And we'll say that from the porch, front porch where they were sitting, it perhaps was facing the south, and the sun would be around on the other side and the morning glories around the little porch made a shade, and they could look across the valley and up on the side of the hill where this little house was being erected. And all the doors had to have just a certain touch that Mary would not have to shove hard. She could just push it and it would latch together easy. Joseph wanted to see to this. It must have the special little touch to it. And each Sunday their custom would set out there and look across the valley and talk about how the little gate must have a heart shape in it because they were in love. And the little table, how it must be built in their furniture, 
was going into the house. And as they sat there this day after the meal was over, and Anna, the widowed mother of Mary, was said, Children, you go on out on the porch, and uh, I will do the dishes today. And as she was doing the dishes, and Joseph sat back and bragged on the cooking, of course, and, and they was looking across, they was remarking about the sermon they heard that morning. Oh, Mary said, Joseph, did it not thrill your heart when the rabbi spoke of the great God who is over our people? Did not it thrill you when the rabbi had taken his text from over in Genesis or Exodus, about the 13th chapter, where he said that pillar of fire, the angel of God, would go before them? And how that God met Moses, the great prophet, in that pillar of fire, and spoke to him on the backside of the desert, and Jehovah was so mindful for his ancient people Israel that he could not forget them, and how he said, I've seen their toils and their sorrows, I remember my word, and I've come down to deliver them. Oh, she says, Joseph, did not that thrill your heart when the, the rabbi said, God said, I remember my word, my promise. Oh, it did, Mary. It thrilled my heart. And how he went down there in Egypt, this great prophet, showed great signs and wonders, brought them out to the Red Sea, and Jehovah just opened up the Red Sea when they were hungry. God brought in quails and fed them. When they were thirsty, they spoke to a rock, got water from there. And all that they had need of, Jehovah seen that it was cared for. When they got sick and was bitten by serpents and had sinned, Jehovah had Moses to make a brass serpent and put it on a pole. What was your interpretation of that, Joseph, my dear? Well, Mary... I believe that that meant that there would be a sin offering someday. And that brass serpent, the brass meant that the serpent itself was sin already judged, and that brass was divine judgment, and divine judgment would be upon one someday and would be an atonement for healing forever. That brass serpent meant that, I believe. And as they sat there and talked, but she said all at once, but did you notice he ruined his sermon? Right at the end of his sermon, he said, after telling how great Jehovah was, now all those days have passed away. Jehovah doesn't perform miracles anymore. There is no such a thing as God ever making healings for the sick or doing anything like that. Jehovah just expects us to be good Pharisees and to go to church and to pay in our tithings and our offerings into the church and build him a nice place and go there and sing hymns every Sabbath morning and worship him. That's what Jehovah expects these days. You know, Joseph, I could hardly agree with the fine rabbi on that. I believe if he ever was Jehovah, he's still Jehovah. If he ever was Almighty, he still is Almighty. You know, God always has a remnant of the people that's going to believe him somewhere. He always has a remnant, someone he can lay his hands on. Always has and always will. Then, as she journeyed on a little farther, she remembered also as they sat out there on the, the porch and was talking, it was their custom to read the scriptures on Sunday afternoon. So she goes back into the building and gets out the little basket and brings out the scrolls. Them days it wasn't in a book like this. It was scroll. One chapter of Isaiah and Jeremiah and all put on leather on a scroll and rolled up and put into a basket. They didn't have paper in those days. So they put it on leather that had been tanned out. So she said, Joseph, you choose the scroll for this afternoon's reading, this Sunday afternoon. And he said, oh, Mary, you reach in and get it, dear. 
And she reached her pretty little hands in as her eyes flashed. She picked up the scroll and handed it over to him. He said, you know, Mary, I would like to hear you read. And she had Isaiah. And she read down in Isaiah and began reading till she come to Isaiah 9 and 6. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Prince of Peace. And she stopped. And she said, Joseph, you are well learned in the Scriptures. What was the prophet speaking of when he said this? Unto us the son is born. Well, Joseph said, Mary, I believe he was meaning the Messiah the coming Messiah that Moses spoke of. Well, she said, Joseph, how would the Messiah be? Will he be a, another God, or will he be, what relation will he be to God? Joseph said he will be God, manifested in the flesh. God will be made manifest in this Son that he'll create. Well, how will he create this Son? Oh, my dear Mary, must Joseph must have said, you know, Isaiah also said in 7.14 there that a virgin shall conceive and shall bear a son, and he will be Emmanuel, God with us. Oh, her pretty eyes must have flashed, and as the evening draw close to dark, they made ready to go to church to hear another message from the rabbi, and the scroll was put away. And as she walked along that morning, she was thinking on those things, and she turned the corner. And when she turned the corner, I believe a light must have flashed, and she looked up, and the beautiful Galilean sun was rising. There was, she must have thought it was a flicker from a shining rock or some piece of metal well polished. They didn't have glass in those days, I don't think. So they must have thought something, but a light seemed to flash before her. She looked around, she seen nothing, and she started on. You know, it's as we think of him, that's when he draws close to us. Draw nigh unto me, and I'll draw nigh unto you, saith the Lord. If we could keep our mind off of the things of the world and so much foolishness that we have no business thinking of, let the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto thee, O Lord. It was at the first Easter when uh, the two apostles, Theophius and his friend, was on the road to Emmaus as they were talking about him that he stepped out of the bush and began to talk with them and then made himself known to them by performing a miracle, just like he did before his crucifixion. And they hurriedly run back and said, Truly the Lord has risen and has appeared to us. Now Mary was thinking of him. And as she went on, all of a sudden she raised her head again. She was positive that time. Right standing before her was a great light, perhaps the same pillar of fire that a led Moses through the wilderness and the children of Israel walking out of this light, perhaps brighter than the sunlight, came the great archangel Gabriel. And he said, Hail, Mary! In other words, stop! Blessed art thou among the women, for you have found favor with God. Oh, what a salute! It frightened the little virgin. It would frighten you when an angel... Someone said to me, Brother Branham, when you see that one appear, who is he? I said, I don't know. I never asked his name. I'm too scared what he's talking. You say, well, I ought to ask him. No, you wouldn't. You can't think of nothing. You just stand still. Oh, what a feeling she must have had with her bucket going to the well to get water. And there in the path was that angel standing there and telling her, she had found grace in the sight of God. And he began to tell her a story. He said, you remember your cousin Mary. Her name is Elizabeth. She is the wife of Zacharias the priest. 
And when Zacharias the priest was old and his wife was old, but they were real servants of the Lord. They were waiting for the consolation of Israel, the coming of the Messiah. See, God's got a remnant somewhere. Somebody's watching and waiting. Always been, always will be. They're watching day by day. And they kept all the commandments of the Lord. But Elizabeth was barren. She had no children. Them days it was a disgrace not to have children. Now it's a disgrace to have children. It's change a brother, buy a little dog and give it the love of a child. And lead it around and put it in the car and, oh my, <laughs> that stinking thing. Pat it and play with it and then make a pan of biscuits. <laughs> I don't believe in that. I'll tell you that right now. Dog's all right, but his place is out the barn, not in the house. So then, anyhow, it hurts your feelings now if I don't watch. So, all right, anyhow, let that go. So much, maybe that's my own opinion. But she was wanting a baby, and her husband was old, and she was past the age of barren. And Zacharias' order at the temple was to burn incense while the people were praying. And while he was burning the incense on the right side of the altar came the angel Gabriel. Did you notice in the scriptures in Luke there it says, on the right side of him, the right side of the altar. You ever notice one of my healing services? I bring the people from my right because the angel of the Lord always comes on my right side. I want him to meet the people so they'll have the anointing when they come up here that he can tell them and bless them. Right side of the altar stood the angel of the Lord. And he said, Zacharias, God has answered your prayers. See what kind of a home an angel comes to? A home that keeps the commandments of God. A home of people that walks up right before God. If you want the honor of an angel visiting your home, have a home ready for him to visit, prepared and ready under the blood of the Lamb. The angels of the Lord come to such places. Notice, you can't walk with the world and expect God to walk with you. Angels won't visit you or nothing else but the world because you cannot mix God and the world together. They will not mix God's holy separated from the world. And the only way he'll ever see you is when he looks through the blood, as I said the other morning, red through red looks white. He can't look through a creed. He can't look through a denomination. He can't look through a handshake or a water. He has to look through the blood. And when he looks through the blood, your red sins looks white to him. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. That's Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. As Eddie Pruitt wrote, All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall, bring forth the royal diadem and crown him, Lord of all, because he was the only one, the only potentate, the only mediator between God and man. There's nothing else to take the place. His blood is the only thing to make atonement. It's God's only way. He's the only mediator. The only, only one is through Jesus Christ. Now, I'm on Zechariah, under the shed blood of a lamb, standing there. And he said, after this day here, I'm Gabriel, stands in the presence of God. And he said, you're going home, and your wife will conceive, bear a son. You call his name John. He'll be great. And he'll turn the hearts of the children of Israel back to the commandments of God. And then when Zechariah, think of it now, a preacher, a priest in the temple, read the scriptures, plenty of examples that such as that had happened before. That was Hannah was a woman that couldn't have a child and God gave her a child. That was Sarah at 90 years old. God gave her a child. That had happened before. But he questioned it. He said, how could this be? My wife's old and I'm old, and how could it be? The angel spoke quickly and said, 
my words will be fulfilled in their days. But because that you've doubted me, doubted my word, you'll be dumb till the day that they be born. But my words will be fulfilled. Hallelujah. God keeps his word. It's unchangeable. If this Pentecostal church refuses to praise God, God can raise up Methodist Baptist or something else to praise him. If the Pentecostal church turns the message of God down, God can take Catholic, atheists, infidels, or anything else and raise up a name to himself. And God's word will be fulfilled. There will be times when the Spirit will be poured out from on high. There will be young men shall see visions, old men shall dream dreams. There will be upon my hands maids and maids children I pour out of my spirit, showing signs in the heaven above. And all these things that's been spoken of will come to pass. God said so. Amen. You want to have a form of godliness and now the power thereof? Go ahead. That's fulfilling the scriptures. But God said, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they'll speak with new tongues, they'll take up serpents, or drink any things will not harm them. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Somebody, somebody's going to do it. God's word's unchangeable. Right. My word shall be fulfilled because I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God. But you'll be dumb and can't speak no more because you've doubted. And you'll never be able to do it until the day the baby's born. And then this angel knew about that. The same angel, six months later, was sent to little Mary and told her about it. Six months later. Now, little Mary said, now she never said it, questioned him. She just said, how will it be? Because that I know not a man. He said, the Holy Ghost shall overshadow thee. Oh, I like that. The Holy Ghost shall come up over thee. And you shall conceive in your womb and bear a son, knowing no man. But this son shall be the Son of God. And he shall save his people from their sins. And he'll take the throne of his father David. And he'll reign forever and ever. And peace shall never cease. Talk about peace. They say, well, he was a prince of peace, yes. And every man accepts him has eternal peace in his heart. The world may be at war. There may be wars and saying this. He never said the world would. The kingdoms of this world belong to the devil. Every one of them is controlled by the devil. The Bible says that this United States and all the rest of the world is controlled by the devil. That's the reason we fight and go on. But when Jesus comes and sits on the throne of his father David... Perfect, he shall reign in every heart. Oh, God, for that day to come. And Satan took him up and said, If thou be the Son of God, do this. And if thou took him to show him the kingdoms of the world, all the kingdoms that ever be, said, They're mine. I'll do with them what I want to. I'll give them to you if you'll bow down and worship it. Jesus knowed in the millennium he'd fall heir to that. He said, Get thee behind me, Satan, for certain thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. Him only shall thou serve. Oh, my. Wonder why trouble. That's our country. Sure, I believe in that. Our leaders and things like that, but it's still dominated by Satan. The Bible says so. All these strict things going on that you hear about, just remember, brother, we are looking for a city to come whose builder and maker is God. That's right. We're looking for our kingdom to come. It isn't Germany. It isn't Switzerland. It isn't the United States. It's Christ and the kingdom from above. Jesus said, if my kingdom was of this earth, then I'd have my people to fight for me. But my kingdom is above. And I could call my father and straightway he'd give me 20 legions of angels. <laughs> Amen! <laughs> when one angel could destroy the whole world! <laughs> Covet not this world's vain riches that so rapidly decay. Build your hopes on things eternal. They will never pass away. In these wars, we take these young kids out just the cream of the crop because they don't know no better no discipline, army discipline. Stick your head up on the hill and let somebody shoot it off. Die like a hero. They gladly do it. Run up around one, shot down another, shot down another, shot down. The nation forgets them when it's their family. Come back to this year and whatever they come back to. You see what I mean. Many of the soldiers. But a man seldom will ever find one that will lay down his life for the cause of Christ. He won't even crawl out of a shade tree and go to church. 
won't even get out behind the television long enough to attend a Wednesday night prayer meeting. That's right. Amen. It's a shame, disgrace. That's the reason angels don't visit the churches. That's the reason angels don't visit homes. We've got to get down to deep sincerity of this thing. The angels of God are here on earth tonight just the same as they've always been. The Holy Ghost has been here ever since the resurrection of Jesus Christ and coming forth the Pentecost. He's appeared two ages all down, getting a remnant of people together. The rest of it is cannon fodder. I'll just tell you that now. It's the fodder that will make the smoke out of torment. Yes, sir, he'll take a born-again experience, washed in the blood of the Lamb, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, or they'll never make that rapture according to this word. That's exactly what the Scripture says. A young lady out here in Oregon was trying to discuss with me one time. She belonged to a church that Mary was the boss over. And she said, talking about, said, I'd hate to know it. I said, you mean to tell me that you're in the, in the heaven that these bunch of idiot cycles carrying on up there last night when you was preaching, if that will be the people that will be ruling in heaven? I said, that's what the Bible says. She said, I said, your blessed Virgin Mary had to go up to Pentecost and receive the Holy Ghost and act like them people did last night or should have never went to heaven. She said, that's not so. I said, let me show you right here in Acts 2 whether it is so or not. Mary got so drunk she staggered like she was drunk on the Spirit and acted like a drunk person on the day of Pentecost. And if God wouldn't let Mary go home to heaven, anything less than that, how in the world are you going to make it without that? Right. Let you belong to any church you want to. You'll have to have the same experience, the same thing, exactly. She said, well, I, I, I wouldn't want to be there. I said, I don't think you have to worry very much about that. <laughs> right. I don't think you have very much to worry about. I said, now go on and write up a real dirty article, live in the paper, and I'll tell you this, thus saith the Lord. You mark my words down. Between this and two months from now, dying on the side of a road in an accident, you'll remember the words I've told you. And she never wrote nothing. That's right, she played a wise trick there. I seen her dying, laying in a car accident. God was just giving her a chance then, but she's smart enough not to write nothing. There wasn't nothing in the paper, they just let it go. So that's a smart idea. She only saved her own life by it. See, God's still God. God said it's far better for you that a millstone hanged at your neck and you drowned in the depths of the sea than even offend one of these little ones that believe in me. Well, is that way? Say, I'm a little one that believes. The Bible says these signs shall follow them that believe. God makes a distinction. He gives a, a mark on the people. If he believes, these signs will follow them that believe. That's right, the believer. Not the say the believer, not the supposed believer, but the real believer. I want to belong to a church that's got them signs and wonders following it. That's where I want to have my fellowship, run of the blood of Jesus Christ, where angels and powers and the Holy Ghost and God works back and forth through his church, through his people, showing signs and wonders. Why, it's the greatest thing I ever known in my life. It's part of heaven on earth. A people that will take God's word. If you haven't got the Holy Ghost in you, how can you take God's word? The Holy Ghost in you will say amen to every word God wrote. Amen. That's right. If the, if the Bible said Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever, the, if you got the Spirit in you, it will say amen. If the Bible said these signs shall follow them that believe in your church, said that's for another age, the Holy Ghost in you will say amen. God's word's right. Every other man's word is a lie. Uh, Peter said on the day of Pentecost, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you and to your children and to them that's far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And your church says, the Holy Ghost cease back with the apostles. You'll say, let every man's word be a lie and God be true. Amen. The Holy Spirit will agree with his own word. It's for you and for you and forever. Ever. As long as the Lord's calling, the Holy Ghost is still there to baptize every saint and every believer. Amen. God's unchangeable word. I was preaching the other night that uh, why, the uh, scripture, the verse of why, why, God's going to ask why, you're going to give account for it. Is there no bomb in Gilead, no physician there? St. Peter wrote, he was doctor, Simon Peter, he wrote out the prescription on the day of Pentecost. You believe that? Well, they said, many brethren, what can we do? He wrote out the prescription for the bomb. Don't try to fool with it. Don't try to take something out of it and say the days of miracles is past. There's no such a thing as the baptism of the Holy Ghost. 
you take some of these quack druggists would take or a quack doctor that would take a, a prescription that a real doctor had wrote that would cure a disease and a quack doctor or druggist takes something out of there, what is it? In there there's a lot of poison and it's enough poison to kill the germ, enough antidote to keep it from killing you. If you take out all the antidote, the poison will kill you. You kill your patient. That's what's the matter with a lot of these churches today, so formal and ungodly. They kill their church by taking the prescription and making some a dogma out of it and not leaving it the way God wrote it. Hallelujah. I believe God's eternal word is just as real as it ever was. I proved it over and over and over and over, and I know it's the truth. Amen. Zachariah stayed right there on the platform, and the angel left him, and he was stricken dumb. Now, the angel said, Your cousin Mary is already six months as it is to be with the mother. And said, Now, this holy thing that's born in you will be the Son of God. You know what Mary said? I wish we had more Mary, sure, now. Mary said, Behold the hands made of the Lord. Be it unto me according to your word. Oh. She never questioned. She never questioned. And another thing, she never waited till she felt life. She didn't wait till she was positive. She didn't wait till she seen that something ceased by her. That's good enough. When God says so, that settles it eternally. That word was good enough for her. She said, Behold the hands made of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And started to rejoicing over it. Not wait. See, she had to believe the impossible. She had to believe something that never happened. That's what we have to do. We have to believe the impossibles to see new life. Amen. But when you believe the impossible, if the doctor says you've got cancer and you're dying, you've got to believe the impossible to see a new life take a hold of you. Amen. If the doctor says you'll never walk, you've got to believe the impossible to see new life coming to you. New life and them fibers and, oh God, bring forth a new hand, a new arm. New lungs, new stomach, whatever it is, God will do it if you're taking out his word. Now, she had no evidence of it at all, only his word. Oh, I like that. I think right now, stop this a minute. As I said, I don't preach to everybody who lives out on the highway. I have to go down the lane sometimes to pick up somebody. Remember the harlot Rahab. She didn't, only the spies brought the report about Joshua being a great man of God, and God had told him, I'll be as you as it was with Moses. She'd heard of how all the Amorites and so forth down in there had fell victim and how he killed Agag and so forth, and Moses had. But she never said, wait a minute, I'll see Joshua, and let me see him perform some kind of a miracle, and then I'll believe. No, sir, the word of the spies was good enough for her. <laughs> Hallelujah! She becomes a great, 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 great grandmother of our Lord Jesus Christ, too. That's exactly right. She married an a officer out of Israel, and out of that come a son which was Boaz, and out of Boaz came Jess, out of Jess come David, out of David come Mary. Hallelujah! Ah, a Gentile, uncircumcised of the heart and ears, believed the message. And received it without any evidence at all. She heard that there was a God that was. Oh, I feel religious. She believed the message. She took out of his word, believed in marvel. The great grandmother of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because she took God out of his word and look what she had to come out of being a harlot in the city. Oh, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that soul that makes a heart as white as snow. No other count I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. No church, no creed, no denomination, no this, no that. Just the blood of Jesus Christ is all will make you white. Amen. Now, I'm not fussing about your churches. I'm not fussing about your creed. I'm trying to tell you, don't put your hopes on that. Don't say I'm a Methodist and that settles it. If you're a Methodist and washed in the blood of Jesus Christ and filled with the Holy Ghost, God bless your heart. We're sure 100% better than sisters. Yes, sir. Baptist, Presbyterian, Catholic, Lutheran, whatever you might be. But when you say, well, I'm a Methodist, I'm a Baptist, that don't mean a thing. Jesus said it wasn't so from the beginning. 
That's right. He knows nothing else but his own blood. God will reckon nothing else but his own son. That's right. He, he, this is my beloved son, said God at Mount Transfiguration. Hear ye him. Amen. Jesus said, He that heareth my word and believeth on him, that he has eternal life and shall never come into the judgment of the past and death under life. And that rock I stand in life, no matter how I feel or how the devil says. Right? God's word, heavens and earth will pass away, but that word will never pass away. Amen. I trust his word. Nothing else I know but his word. That's what I believe in. I, I don't go how I feel. The devil make, make me feel sometimes I wasn't saved. And the devil make me feel I wasn't healed. I don't care what he says. I can beat him on that word every time. I say, thus saith the Lord. Look at that, boy! Yes, sir, you can't move that. Jesus defeated him the same way. He said, it is written. He had power to send him back into hell. But he didn't do it. He showed that Satan could be defeated right there on the word of God. He, every time Satan met him, he defeated him on the word of God. God's eternal, everlasting word is true. Yes. Amen. I like that. Know that you have a sure foundation. She never waited for anything else. She got the word of God in her heart, and she was going around testifying she was going to have a baby before she had any evidence of it or not. Now notice, for a young woman to have a baby without being married, that'd be a disgrace. She didn't care about the disgrace. She had God's word. So many people now say, Oh, if I'd have to get down there and boo-hoo and cry. If I'd ever have to speak in them tongues. Oh, not me. Oh, when well, my mother would turn me out. My society, why well, they never play cards with me again. Don't worry, if you do that, you won't play any more cards anyhow. That's right. You don't have to worry about that. And your societies will be a bunch of trash to you. That's exactly right. Because there will only be one society. That's the blood of Jesus Christ and the redeemed from the foundation of the world. That's the society of Jesus Christ. Amen. Blood wash talked about, despised, rejected, cast out, called idiots, everything else. But that don't take away the promise of God. God remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. And no man's no better than his word. And his word sticks just as good now as it ever did for every man that will believe it. She said, Behold the hands made of the Lord. Be done to me according to thy word. I can see her little brown eyes light up like the stars of heaven. She's going around saying, You know, I'm going to have a baby. Oh, Mary. Yes, I'm going to have a baby. Are you and Joseph married? No! He'll be the Son of God. <laughs> Nothing like that had ever happened before. But she didn't care what ever happened before anyhow. She had God's word, God's promise. That's good enough. She didn't care about the shameful part of it. She had God's word for it. Exactly. Look in the temple that day when she dedicated him. Here he was coming, and all the mothers coming around with little needlework clothes and things like that on the little babies. And, and there, all of them said, uh-uh, look at that. There's that Mary. See, that baby was born out of wedlock. Stay back from him. Stay away. And stay way back from him. He was wrapped in swaddling's cloth. Not needlework. Swaddling's cloth. And when he was laying in there, if I'm told right, that's the yoke on an ox. It, they put a stable in there that they had stuff that kept it from rubbing his shoulder. They claim that's what Jesus was wrapped in, not even clothes to wear. No place to lay his head. Come to the earth through a barred womb over a manure pile. Went out and had a barred grave to be buried in. And then we think we're somebody. Oh, my. The God of heaven who could create bread and fish and make water into wine, who made heavens and earth and took the place of a humble poorest among all, washed the feet of disciples, the very dust that he created, he washed. The very dust that he created, he was made out of, put his tent down here and lived among us in a body of flesh, crossed his cast, come down from God out of heaven and become man. In order to strike the heart, that's a super sign. It's a real sign. You talk about signs when Jehovah was made flesh and dwelt among us. A sign that ought to strike the heart of every man to know that God's so humble. God, precious, tender, laid aside his splendor, stooping to woo and win my soul. As Booth Cliburns wrote the famous song, Down From His Glory. Oh, my, I like to hear that saying, glory. The great creator became my savior, and all God's fullness dwelleth in him. How I love that. In this day, when they try to make him a prophet, try to make him just a man, he was more than that. He is Emmanuel. There he was. And she ran out and began to tell everybody what had happened. Oh, how God had blessed her. And she happened to think, Elizabeth, 
My cousin, I haven't seen her for years, so I think I'll slip up and see her. So she ran up to see her, as I said the other night, and when she got up there to see her, she'd hid herself several days because she was a, 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 didn't show herself then like women do now. And so she uh, ran into a place and hid herself back. See these ladies, excuse me, sisters, please do just a minute. Just lay your conscience aside a minute. You listen to your doctor. I ought to be as much. I'm your brother. But a woman out here, to be mother, walk around the street in little old shorts and things like that, it's a disgrace to the nation, to the flag, to human race, to anything else. A cigarette in her hand walking like that. Oh, my, my, my. If, if this is the Holy Spirit I have, you'll have very little chance to ever make it even to the door. And that's right. God hates that. Yes, sir, that's the lowest thing a woman ever done when she started smoking cigarettes. And you husbands that'll let her do it till I've got my opinion of you. That's exactly. You're not the boss of your house. No, indeed. I don't say my wife won't do it, but when she does, she won't be Miss William Branham. That'll be one thing, sure. Yes, indeedy. I don't say my daughters won't do it, but you just look up their back and see how many blisters is on them when it gets through. That's exactly right. I don't say they won't do it. I don't know. God holds the future. I hope I don't sire something like that. That's right. I don't know what will happen. But listen, when the worst fifth columnist there is in the nation is a cigarette-smoking mother, I get statistics from the government. It says that 80% of the mothers that smoke cigarettes has to put their babies on cow's milk. If they, smoke, if they get the nicotine poison from the milk, they don't live 18 months. Think of that. Sabotage. Well, as I've always said, it isn't the robin that pecks the apple that hurts it. It's the worm at the core that kills it. That's right. It's our own dirt and filth around. Them cigarette companies trying to make women think they're reduced. It's giving you TB and cancer. Don't the doctors tell you that? Don't listen to all this. How they take that stuff and, and put it out there on television and, and then write it off out of the United States government taxes and then take a preacher and send him to penitentiary if they're not paying taxes on something that he's for. Oh, my. We're right for damnation. There's nothing left but judgment. Yeah. Right. She isn't very old. Revelation 13 said this nation wouldn't live very long. Anyhow, you know that. A little lamb raised up and never become a ram like the rest of them. It died in its youth. That's right. When the ecclesiastical power and civil powers met together with those two little horns of the ram, the United Church and State, and we're almost doing it right now. It just depends on which way the wave blows when they have another election. We're almost at it right now. Just let it go ahead. You might think I'm a fanatic, but you write it down on a little piece of paper somewhere and stick it away in your Bible and watch one of these days. It's coming. She might be right at the door. You better pray. You better get right with God. The hour is at hand. We see nations breaking, Israel awakening, the signs that the Bible foretold. Gentile days numbered with horrors and cumbered. Oh, return of this first to your own. No, oh, my. Get away from these things in the world and get to God as quick as you can. It's the only hope that we have. The only thing that's left. Every nation is ready to be blown to bits. The end time is at hand. And there's no other thing that can last. Nowhere you can put your hopes but on the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the righteousness of his people. Amen. How true that is. Mary went up to meet me to Elizabeth. And I can see Elizabeth back in there knitting these little booties, you know, and getting things ready for the baby. But you know, the funny thing was, the baby had never moved. It was six months with her, with the mother, and that's altogether subnormal. We know that. About three to four months. And this is six months, and little John had never moved. And she was back there fixing little booties, and I hear some of them say, I see a woman coming, maybe somebody on the outside. And Elizabeth raised up the curtain. She looked. She said, I ought to know that woman. Ever who it is is awful happy. You know, there's something about a Christian that's awful happy. <laughs> There's something about a man that's ever met God. There's something happy about the woman or a man. Here come little Mary. She's only about 18 years old. Her little eyes are sparkling. Her little cheeks rosy. And here she comes just as hard as she could come. Oh, she was just rejoicing and, and praising God. And as she got closer, Elizabeth looked good. And she said, well, if that ain't Mary, my cousin. Now, you know that John and Jesus were second cousins. So he said, uh, here comes Mary, my cousin. And she ran out of the house, got a little shawl and put around her. She ran out and she met Mary and threw her arms around her and began to hug her. You know, I wish people loved one another again like that, don't you? Oh, my, they're cold, aren't they? This is cold as a water on a pickle. I've never seen anything in my life like it. Oh, it's terrible. Nobody has any more friendship. Brother Argenbach, you remember long years ago when we used to have the farm and 
something went wrong with the neighbor over there, he got sick, we go over and cut his wood and uh, get the corn in and plow the corn or whatever it was. We have to take care of one another. Now you don't know your neighbor's dead until you read it in the paper or somewhere. That's right. We don't have any more love one for another. And we come out like here not long ago. People don't even uh, act right to one another. I was going downtown. She'll get me for this. My wife. So I was going downtown. This lady said, Hello, Sister Branham. I looked over to her. I said, Me. I said, That lady spoke to you. She said, I spoke. I said, How did she hear it when I couldn't hear it sitting here? And I know my ears is good. My hearing's all right. I said, How did she hear it? She said, I, I smiled. I said, Oh, my. A little old silly green. Now that ain't speaking. No, sir. I like a good old-fashioned pump handle handshake like that. I, I like to feel it. Like Paul Rayner said when he left his home one day, he said him and his wife was having a little fuss at the table. You all remember the late Paul Rayner died down here in California, the graveyard of preachers in Los Angeles, all go in there and die. So then um, when they come to the place there, when he, uh, he said he left his wife and this had a little spat and said use at the door. He'd, She'd kiss her goodbye, go on out the gate, and they'd wave goodbye. So that morning, we went to the door, and she kind of had her head down, said, kissed her goodbye, and went out the gate, waved back goodbye, started down the street, and happened to think, what if she had died? What if something happened to me? She's the dearest woman on earth. How I love her. I remember when I promised her at the altar, lived true to her. All these things here, I'd always love, honor, and cherish. Oh, he said, God began to deal with my heart. Back I went, through the gate, into the door, opened up the door, and said, Barry, where you at? Said, here's a woman. You know how a woman can do it. Stand behind the door, kind of crying. Said, he looked over at her like that, pulled up her chin, and gave her a great big kiss on the lip, turned around, said, bye. Said, bye. Said, ran out the gate, looked around again, said, look back, she stands over, and said, bye. She said, bye. Said, she said it just like she did the first time, but the last time had a feeling in it. <laughs> so that's just why I like a handshake. One's got a feeling in it. That's why I like religion. Amen. One's got a feeling in it. That you pass from death into life, and the Holy Ghost is witnesses to you that you are sons and daughters of God. Something with a feeling in it. Something that makes you know that it's real. You pass from death unto life. Here, some time ago down in Florida, I went out there to visit this little boy called Little David. Say, I believe I see Brother What's his name back there, Marsh, from down at the uh, tabernacle. Is that right? You remember the night our tabernacle was too little and we had to go over our auditorium and swap with little David? Little David had a big auditorium and we had too many for our auditorium, so we just swapped. And he come over and we went to our kids. I said, David, let me pay you for that, or Mr. Walker, his father. He said, never mind, never mind, that's all right, Brother Brandon, go on. And little David got out of Florida and, of course, the, that's one thing about the Pentecostal people. They, the ox knows the stall and the master knows the, the ass knows the crib, but my people does not know. When they had that little David that would have won thousands of souls, but he come from another organization, so the other organization had to have a little David, another organization, another organization, all of them got little David. As soon as God gave a gift of healing, the other one had to have it, this denomination had to have it, and that one had to have it, and that one, oh my, they just don't understand, that's all. They took that little boy and the little Christian daddies would have got around him and pushed his head down a little and didn't get puffed up. That little boy was a preacher, not mama, you little Jesus born on no Christian. What was the next mama? No, no, that little boy took a text and handled it like a preacher. And if all of them had got around and not let him get puffed up in his head, he'd have won tens of thousands of little children to Christ. But no, each one had to have a little David. There was Mrs. Willis and them down there with all kinds of little Davids and two pages to put little David. So he asked me if I'd come down. He's hung up. And I went down there and they had some kind of duchess or... What is, is that right, duchess? Some kind of a woman, that duchess. I don't know what it means, but she's a great woman. And... Oh, thousands were around there to be prayed for us when Brother Bosworth came in. And uh, somebody come to me, Brother Lindsay did, and said, Brother Branham, I believe Brother Lindsay or Brother Moore one said, the Duchess wants to see you. I said, the who? said, the Duchess. I said, who's the Duchess and what is the Duchess? And he said, she's a great woman, some kind of great something, you know, and said, she owns this ground out here. I said, see her and let these poor sick people lay here and about 2,000 trying to get to me to be prayed for and me leaving this afternoon and See a woman swell and healthy and let them poor people lay there? I said, no, sir. I'll see these sick people have got time to see another one. Oh, he said, but Brother Graham, she'll be standing at the door when you walk out. I said, it won't take much of time. She just wants to meet you. Well, I said, all right. And as so I went out, here stood a great big woman with enough jewelry on her hands to send a missionary around the world 50 times preaching the gospel. And here she come, and she had a pair of specs on a stick. 
She had a hell out like this, and she said, Hello. She said, Are you Dr. Branham? I said, No, ma'am. You know me? I said, I'm his brother Branham. And she said, I am charmed to meet you. She held her hand way up like that. I got a hold of that big old fat hand and pulled it down. I said, Get down here so I know you want to see me again. I told you, this, oh, I told you, brother, I, oh, I never. What you used to put on what we call the street fishes, putting on the dog when you were out, right, nothing anyhow. Oh, if all American people can't cut the dog on, they will argue about it and got a good notion saying what we see in Switzerland, bring up woman coming out of all this 10 cent store jury. We was having a good time to Miss America come in, set a poodle dog on the table, and I, oh, <laughs> enough to make you sick. I didn't enjoy that steak that day so much better argument. <laughs> Down there at Luzon, I never, it just make you sick. Oh, she's Miss America, the cigarette, the doctor must have sold her to stay as far away from as she could. She had it out like that. And a great big stick out there trying to put on a dog. Oh, I've never seen such in my life. What of it? I was passing through a museum not long ago, and they had the estimation of a man's body laying there, and it's just about enough uh, whitewash to sprinkle a hen's nest, and a man weighs 150 pounds, and uh, just about enough calcium and potash. Anyhow, estimated all together, a man weighing 150 pounds, you know how much he's worth? 84 cents. And you'll put a $20 hat on 84 cents. A $500 mink coat on 84 cents. <laughs> Turn your nose up in the air. If it rain, it drowns you. Trying to think there's somebody when you're not. You're nothing but 84 cents. That's all. Oh, my. You go out to the restaurant and get a bowl of soup and be a spider in it, you'd sue the restaurant. Then you let the devil cram cigarettes with the bottle and skin down your throat to damn that soul is worth 10,000 dollars. And then talk about civilization. Oh, my. We're, the wheels turn backwards again. Yes, sir. Then boy, stand there, look at that one, look at it, and said, Jack, we're not worth very much, are we? Eighty-four cents. I said, wait a minute, boys. You've got a soul in there for 10,000 worlds. That's right. He never valued it. Dust thou art to dust return us was not spoken of the soul. Lives of great men all remind us, and we can make our lives sublime with parties leave behind us footprints on the sands of time, footprints that perhaps another while sailing over life's solemn main a forelong and shipwrecked brother in seeing shall take heart again. Oh, I like that so well. This Longfellow's Psalm of Life. And then Mary, when she was coming up there back to my text, and the little cheeks of blush in her eyes, she knows she's close to the house right up along the road testifying to everybody she's going to have a baby. Here come Elizabeth out with her little shawl on her and said, Mary! And she said, Elizabeth! And they begin to hug one another, oh my. And she said, I am so glad to see you, Mary. She said, yes, I am glad. She said, I see. She said, yes, that is right. She said, I'm to be mother. She said, my husband, Zachariah, is all a, a dumb, said he can't speak. He met an angel. She said, I understand. Amen. She knows what it's all about. She said, but you know, Mary, she said, I'm just a little bit worried. So why? Said, it's six months with me as a woman with, to be mother, and there's never no life yet. She said, I'm just a little bit worried. And I can see Mary at them little eyes. She said, but you know, I'm going to be mother too. Oh, you and Joseph got married? No, me and Joseph isn't married. <laughs> Mary, my cousin, you're going to have a baby before you and Joseph gets married? Yes! Amen. Oh, how's it going to be? The Holy Ghost is going to overshadow me. He's already done it. Oh, and in my womb is going to be a baby, which is going to be little Emmanuel. And he said, I shall call his name Jesus when he's born. And as soon as he said Jesus, little John began to shout and jump. <laughs> Jump up and down. How does he get going? Up and down. Oh, my. And the Holy Ghost come up on Elizabeth. And John, the Bible said, he was filled with the Holy Ghost in his mother's womb. Oh, my. Yes. God keeps his word. And listen, if the first time that the name of Jesus was ever spoke to human lips, Made a dead baby come to life and jump for joy in his mother's room. What I do to a church that claims to be born again of the Spirit? Amen! How can a killer cancer stay there? How can a killer cataract? How can a deaf or dumb spirit bind you when in my name they shall cast out devils? Hallelujah! Just don't doubt. Take his word like Mary did and start rejoicing. Will you do that? You just going to be prayed for tonight, will you? 
As soon as the name of Jesus is called over you, when you begin to leap for joy, then praise God, it's all over now. Hallelujah, it's all gone now. Go out of here and anybody say, how you feeling? Wonderful, wonderful. Just fine and dandy. Wow. How do you know you're healed? God said so. That's all. Like they said to Abraham, how do you know you're going to have that baby? He said, I want 10 yards of bird eye. I want some pins. I want some booty. What? Well, you're an old man. Your wife's old. Don't make any difference. You're going to have a baby. How do you know you're going to have it? God said so. First month passed. Tell her how you feel. No different. You're going to have a baby anyhow. God said so. Ten years passed. Twenty years passed. Twenty-five years passed. How do you feel, Sarah? No different at all. Praise God. We're going to have a baby anyhow. How do you know? God said so. That's enough. When God said it, that is enough. Abraham called all things as well as though the word is called. He took the word of God for you. He's able to keep his promise. And we being dead in Christ, take out Abraham's feet and our heads are coming to God. And we can't trust God for 15 minutes. We can't trust him from the time you leave here to you come to off the pulpit. You're already doubting. And now where's the rapture coming from? Abraham's seed. When you follow the commandments of God and take God at his word, these signs shall follow them that believe. God sent gifts and everything else and proved to us that he's with us. When we lay hands on you, believe it with all your heart. Well, for that time, it's a finished work. God said so. Amen. So if your prayer eyes and can't even move a finger, say, I'm already healed. How do you know God said so? God said so. Brother Bram said so. No, I never. God said so. <laughs> God said so, and God's word is true. Nothing else can stop it. God give us more Marys tonight and people who will take his word. Let us bow our heads now as we pray. Is there one in the building before we start the prayer line? would like to say, Brother Branham, I wish I had the Spirit of God in me would make me take every word of God and say it's the truth. I wish I had the Spirit of God in me that would make me say, God says so. That's all there is to it. And every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. I'm trusting in his love divine for every promise in the book is mine. Would you raise your hands and say, pray for me, Brother Branham. God bless you. Oh, my. Over the building is tremendous. Is there a sinner that doesn't know how to trust him, would dare to come here. Now remember, I'm not one of these pathetic calling altar call preachers. I believe the Word does it or it don't do any good anyhow. See? I believe if you know the Word and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you walk right up here tonight and turn around this audience and say, I'm convinced that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I'm not accepting him as my personal Savior. There's plenty of water down here in the lake and the Holy Ghost is waiting. Yeah. That's right. That's the way to come. That's the way to come. Yes, sir. If you believe, the minute you believe and accept him as your personal Savior, stand up before man and witness it. He said, that quick, I'll witness it before my Father and the holy angels. That's true. Will you come now? While we wait just a moment, while the music continues to play. Lord Jesus, I pray thee, Lord, I don't know the audience. Thou does, Lord. Help now, Lord, if there's one here, so that I'll be sure at that great judgment day that they won't point a, a bony finger at me and say, if you'd only call that night, I'm giving to them the opportunity now, Father. It's their soul that's at stake. Let them come forward now and confess their sins and believe on Jesus, thy Son. Accept him as your personal Savior, the very Jesus that was conceived in the womb of Mary when Jehovah, the Almighty God, overshadowed her and brought a blood cell into her womb, mixed with the egg that was in the woman, brought forth not the blood of a Jew or the blood of a Gentile, but the blood of God, and through that holy, unadulterated blood, saves us from our sins. Grant, Lord, that if there be a sinner, you know their heart, I don't. Let them come now while we're waiting.
together. This man, this woman, and this Indian boy, three precious souls. We have the picture now. They have come up here tonight because that God called them. Now Jesus said, no man can come to me except my father calls him first. Is that right? My father has to call him first. And all that comes to me, I will in no way shine out. And will give you everlasting life and will raise him up at the last day. Is that what God said? At this time. Now, he that's ashamed of me before the, the man, I'll be ashamed before him as the judgment, the father, and the holy angel. But he that will stand and confess me before man, him will I confess before my father and the holy angel. These things have just not been given to me. God has cut down all the book of life. He that heard my word, and believe upon him that sent me has eternal life and shall never come to judgment but pass from death into life. Do you believe that? Now these my friends, your friends, are no longer that. They are brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. If there's some minister here, I'll just go down to here that know these people. I want you to come forward now, any minister that's in the locality where these people live from, come up and get down to the right hand fellowship and take them to your church and carry out the prescription that was given to the Bible for them. Is there a pastor here at, at, your, at one of the churches that knows the people? Are you people local here from this community? Are you local here? You're not from here. All right? You're not from this locality here then. Are you, uh, my brother, Indian boy, you're not from here either? Not from here. How many of you welcome them into the kingdom of God as brothers and sisters? Raise your hand. God bless you. As you return out to your home, will you go to a nice church and tell a pastor you got saved? Will you do that? You will, you will, sir. Will you will, sister. God bless you. Oh, that's fine. Let's sing, Blessed be the tie that binds out for them as they go to their seat. Go now, and if I never see you again this side of the river, I'll see you there. As they pass by, shake your hand. Blessed be the
Oh, that just makes me feel so good. Just think. That's, that right there is worth 30,000 worlds according to the Bible. Each soul is worth 10,000 worlds. Oh, isn't he wonderful? Yeah. I believe God's going to call that Indian boy to be a preacher. The lady said she was from Hot Springs, Arkansas, and when I was there at the meeting, having a rough time, if there ever was, she said that light, how many have seen the picture of it now? We got it here, I guess you all been by. That light, she saw it come above me while I was preaching there, and her husband said she's out of her mind, she didn't see it. She did see it. And it's stuck with her on till now. She's become a Christian now. God bless you, sister. That same halo of God's grace is over you now. It'll lead you to the promised land. That's what it's sent for. Amen. Amen. All right. Where's Billy Paul? What prayer did you give out? One word. Is he here? C50 to 100. All right. Who has C50? Raise up your hand so we can be sure to get them all in. We're going to call them. You want me to tell you something? There's some people in here tonight got some faith. I, this is the best faith I've found since the meeting started. I can see visions breaking over the people right here now. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Just have faith and don't doubt. He's wonderful, isn't he? See this elderly man sitting here, suffering with hardening of the arteries, <laughs> and have a little bit of hard of hearing. If you believe there, sir, with all your heart, God will make you well. <laughs> Amen. Here's a woman sitting right over here praying for her daughter. Not here, has got sinus trouble. If you believe with all your heart, lady. You touched him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have faith in God. God bladder trouble. You believe that God will make you well? Man sitting next to her with heart trouble. You believe that God will make you well? It'll be done. You accept it, both of you. You have prayer cards? You don't, you don't have to have one. See? He knows your heart. That's what she's praying about. Is that right? Raise up your hand so the audience will see that it's true. Raise up your hand. All right. All right. See how it is? The Holy Spirit's here. You just have to believe him. Is that right? If thou canst believe, all things are possible. If you can believe. I'm watching the discernment. Let the discernment line be out there. I'm just going to pray for these. I see something taking place. Hallelujah. Amen. The stomach trouble's gone, sir. You can just quit praying over there. Believe it, the Lord heals you. God bless you. You believe it? You just praying, Lord, let him see, speak to me tonight. I have no way to get in there. Your stomach trouble's over. Go home and get well now. Jesus Christ makes you well. Sitting there praying just as hard as you could, and I've seen that light move around over him like that. See him refuse food. You're all right now. Go be made well. Mm -hmm. I see a woman sitting here. She's holding a prayer card in her hand sitting right there. I doubt where she hears me. She's hard of hearing, but if she just accepts her healing, it's right over her right now. She has bad blood too. It's artery troubling her arms and things. That's right. This elderly lady, short bobbed hair, green looking dress on, holding a card in her hand. If you'll believe right now, you won't even have to come on the platform. Can you hear me? All right. That's it. Amen. That's all right. She don't have to come now. Just tell her she don't have to come. Tell her somebody there she don't have to come. You're all right. God bless you. <laughs> Oh, praise the Lord. I like to see that. Poor old woman sitting there. Nobody looking at her. Nobody paying attention to her. But God saw her. Amen. That brother sitting there is the head up there. Just pray. You don't have a prayer card, do you, sir? Out there? No, you don't need it. You're all right anyhow. Go on home. You'll be well. Now, is he still there? What did they touch? The hem of his garment. They didn't touch me. They touched him. Now, see, their faith saved them. Does that make Jesus Christ, that one we was talking about, born to the virgin birth? He isn't dead. He's alive. Is that right? You say, Brother Brown, how do you do that? It's just a gift. You just relax yourself before God. 
and just like this microphone. That's a that's a mute. That microphone cannot speak by itself. Neither can I speak. How do I know you? Everybody that I said anything to just a while ago, whoever it was, raise up your hand if I'm strangers to you. Everybody would just call the Holy Spirit. Call, raise up your hand. If there you are, see? That's what he's called. And I don't know none of them. How many in this line that I don't know? Raise up your hands. You know that we are strangers one another. I don't know any of them. See? So I'd be a mute. It's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Now God can use a man for his microphone, don't you think so? If you can just get dumb enough to yourself, let God do it. That's right. That's the way it is. Amen. All right. Has that anybody come in? Any of the rest of us? 90 or from 100? All right. Let's start the prayer line. We'll wait till we get these through. Now remember, in the prayer line, you have seen the discernment then out there that doesn't have a prayer card, haven't you? Do you believe that makes the anointing on me now of the Holy Spirit? Does the Bible say this is God's word true? If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Is that right? Now look, a while ago when the Holy Spirit was falling, that was the blessings of the law. Now this, as you see, operating this way is the power of the law. That's blessing. Don't get blessing and power mixed up. You can have a blessing and not power enough to cure a toothache. But power of the Lord is to manifest God. See what I mean? The power of the Lord. Now, now that was people out there that doesn't have a prayer card. Now, here's one with a prayer card. Are you, you're, you're the lady that's in the prayer line. All right, come here and stand right here before. Look on me. I say that like Peter and John passed through the gate called uh, Beautiful. Now, I've never seen you in my life. We're strangers to one another. God knows us both. If God will, will tell me what you're here for, will you believe me to be his prophet? You will. How many rest of you out there will? Look here. Here's my hand. Here's God's Bible. As far as I know, I've never seen the woman in my life. I might have been going down the street somewhere out here and seen her going past her in an automobile. If I, I mean to know her. She says that she doesn't know me, I don't know her. Is that, is that not, lady? If they just raise up their hands so the people see. Here we are. Now, what is the power of God? What is the sign of Jesus Christ? Jesus said, the things that I do shall you also. Is that right? And what did he say in St. John 5, 19? I do nothing till the Father shows me. Now, in the Bible, when Philip comes to him, he knew that he had found Nathaniel under the tree. He told the woman after well what her trouble was. A woman touched his garment out in the audience, went out there. He told her he's the high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmity. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the Bible said that the Word, in the beginning, was the Word. How many know that? The Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and blood among us. Is that right? Now, let me catch you. Hebrews 4. The Bible said the Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the sun of the bone in the mire, and a discerner of the thoughts of the mind. Jesus perceived their thoughts because he was the Word. Is that right? Now, God used man for his agent. Is that right? Always. God used the man to be his agent. Jesus was God's agent. Elijah was God's agent. John was God's agent. Now, if this age God has a witness, Lord, let me be your agent. Then let... What's wrong with her? Let her be the judge, whether it's right or not. That ought to set it with the congregation. Is that right? Look this way, sister. Now, if I get myself relaxed, you just believe on me. Like Peter and John said, look on us, you know what I mean? Just pay attention to what I'm saying. Not knowing you, never seeing you, total strangers. If God will tell me your condition, you know whether it's true or not. Then will it help you? Will it help? It wouldn't heal you, but it will help you have faith to be healed if you're sick. I don't know that you're sick. I don't, I don't know anything about you. I never see you. But you are here because you've got some trouble in your neck. It's a growth in your neck. And then I believe the doctor has pronounced something or other wrong with the, in the, in the tongue. No, saliva. Saliva gland. That's right. All right. Mrs. Rogers? That's your name. Now you return to your home happy because you're going to be well. All right. You believe with all your heart? All right, then have faith as we pray for the people. You all help me now. Them visions are already making me weak. You see, I can't. How many knows that visions make you weak? 
When Moses went out, he didn't put his, I'm talking this minute to get my strength back now. See, you go somewhere else, you're in another world. You see what's happened, what's taken place, what was, what is, and what will be. See, Moses performed that miracle one time, and all Israel believed me. I'm your brother that Jesus Christ sent, witnessed by a light hanging over me years ago, even when I was born as a little boy. At the age of 21, when I was become a minister, he vindicated down on the river before 10,000 people. It went on the Associated Press. I come to you and told you about laying hands on the people and seeing the gift operate. Told you that he would come to pass, you know the secret of the heart. Everything exactly the way he said and has been prophesied has come to pass. Is that right? All that was in my first ministry, raise up your hands if that was prophesied would come to pass. The Bible said if there be one among you who claims to be a prophet or spiritual, and what he says comes to pass, hear him, for I'm with him. Is that right? That's a sign of it. Some of them says, well, Brother Bram, here not long ago, someone said, Brother Bram, Brother Bram's all right when he's discerning, but his theology is wrong. Well, that just shows you how much you know about what a prophet means. I don't call myself a prophet, you do. The word of the Lord came to a prophet. What is a prophet? Is a witness to foretell, to show a vindication that he is a diviner of the divine word. The word of God came to the prophet. So look that down and find out that's not right. Now, to you standing in the prayer line, for just lay hands on you now. You're going across so I can get every one of you. And there's some more cards. I believe somebody else out there has cards, don't you? Is there some more we tuck up a straggling? I believe from A's and B's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven cards left. All right, we're going to put them right in the end of this line, bring them right on here. But now, as we start praying, how many out there to this audience will raise your hand that you will be praying for these people too? All of you, all of you pray now. We want, what if this is my sister? Well, it's somebody's sister, somebody's daughter, somebody's child. Let's pray now, all of you with your heads down. Now come to them. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, that name that made little John rise from the dead and jump in his mother's womb, may it heal our sister. Amen. All right, come to me. Leading now with all your heart. Come. You believe? Oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal this precious man. Amen. Now you know I know what's wrong with you, but it don't do no good to tell you, because you know what's wrong, don't you? But you believe that God will heal you anyhow? Then old cough will leave you, and as many will be gone, you'll go on All right, come believe me. Our Heavenly Father, I bless my sister and call over her that name that caused little John to jump in his mother's womb. Grant it, Lord, for the healing. Amen. God bless you, sister. Come now. You believe with all your heart? You know that I know what's wrong with you. Oh, Lord, I pray that you'll heal our sister as I lay my hands upon her in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go rejoice now. Be in heaven. Amen. Now, brother, you believe you'll do it? In the name of Jesus Christ, as that name all sufficient, in my name, they shall cast out devils. Here's my hands. Lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. These signs shall follow the believer. Lord, you prove that I do believe you. So I pray for him in Jesus' name. Amen. So happy. This life is all over. You believe, sister? Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I lay hands on my sister. I'm a believer. He said these signs shall follow them. Let her be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Come, sister, believing with all your heart. Now, Father God, as a believer, along with this great church of God here tonight, laying hands upon our sister and condemning the sickness and asking for her healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Prayer of faith shall save the sick. God shall raise them up. Our Heavenly Father, I lay my hand upon my sister and ask that in the name of Jesus Christ that you will heal her and make her well. May she go and be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go ahead now. Rejoice. It's all over. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, may my sister be healed. I pray for her through that all-sufficient name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Go rejoicing, saying, thank you, Lord. Now, Amen. what I don't get is why don't you rejoice and praise God when he comes here? Now, that's what I can't understand, church. Don't you know that God just as much God one time as he is another? See? Now, someone said to me, now, I'm going to say, I don't understand it. Well, now, listen you know I'm not bothering you out, don't you? You know I'm trying to get a truth over to you. Do you believe that? Yeah. You realize that? God, I, there wasn't a one past but what I see what was wrong with it. If I start into the vision, what does it do? It just scatters them and there, there you are. See, the people go by, they'll come by and say, yeah, yeah, and you catch it. See, well, no, I never got it. 
That's the reason you give prayer cards. If you don't, they'll come right back in the line again. Come back again. It just weakens your faith each time. Go weaker and weaker, weaker and weaker. Just as soon as you pass by here, like you're passing under the cross. You're not passing by me. You're passing by him. He knows you. Knows all about you. He could tell anything he wanted to. You believe that? Yeah. You, lady. I'm a stranger to you. God knows you. You believe he can tell me what your trouble is? If you would, would it help you? You're praying for somebody else. That's right. Your husband. Your husband has internal trouble. He has serious head trouble. He's a veteran of the war. He was hurt in the war. He has severe headaches. You're from a place called Fort Bag. Your name is Mrs. O'Neill. Take that handkerchief and put on it. And he, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. A dark shadow shadows him. Go believe now, sister, and be, he'll be healed in Jesus' name. How do you believe? Have faith. I see it nearly kills you. Come believe him, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, may he be healed. Come. In the name of Jesus Christ, may he be healed. That's my faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, may he be healed. Come down. You know how I found that out? Look here. Now put my hand on yours. See that swell up and turn red? Them little white things running over? That shows that your condition is a tumor. You're for an operation. You believe? Oh, what? Let me show you about my hand. See? It is all right hand there. Now put this back there. There it is. Now to you old timers. You see that? That's exactly. Now watch it. You believe me with all your heart? I can make it leave you, but I can't make it stay away. Now so that you'll fully understand. Take this other hand here. Lay your hand over on here. Now, my hand looks just as normal, doesn't it? That's your left hand. Now, take your hand. I put this hand on. There it is. It doesn't look normal there, does it? I put mine on. Still normal. Put yours on. There it is. Swells up, turn red and splat. Little white things run over one. That's a tumor. See, it's a multiplication of cells alive, and there's something to kill you. I can make it leave if you'll believe it'll stay away. All right, you watch my hand. Better bow your head on this. This is casting out of it. Oh, Lord. Hear the prayer of your servant. Answer my prayer, Father. Tumor, you devil, leave the woman in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of There you go. Now, sister, I look behind you. It's all gone now, is it? The tumor's dead. Go on your road rejoice and say, thank you, Lord. Anybody ever seen that done before? See, God never takes a gift. Here, look at this woman here. Yes, sir. Stomach trouble. Got it in your stomach. Look here at my hand. See that swell? Watch. I take your hand off. Does it turn back normal? I put my hand on like yours. Doesn't bother? I take the other hand. Doesn't bother? Now, take this hand put it on there. There's your altar. Is it there? All right. Now, will you believe if I take it off of you by prayer? You will believe it'll stay away. You'll go ahead and eat your supper. Be well. Lord God, I challenge this devil not for miracles, but this is the last night of this earth, that the people might know that you're God. Glorify your name among them, Lord. Satan, leave the woman in the name of Jesus Christ. There it goes. Now look at my hand. Now put your other hand on. Is that normal? Now put this same hand back. Now you see what happened a while ago. Now put that hand back. There it is. Now, your stomach troubles well. Go on your road rejoice. Just have faith, that's all. All gifts work. And he told me the other day, just speak the word, and it'll be done if you'll get the people to believe you. Now, how many ever read my book? The angel of the Lord said to me, you'll be gi-, I said, the people won't believe me. He said, you'll be given two signs. One, you'll take your hand and tell them what's wrong with them. They won't believe that. Then you'll tell them the very secret of their heart. And they'll have to believe that. But the preacher from down there, do you, was not what it was not at your meeting? Here it is, all of it in there. Now God said, just speak the word. Pray for the sick. It'll happen. That's the name of Jesus. Heal this man, Lord. Amen. Go believe in God, sir. Make her be well with all your heart. Amen. You were sharing a while ago for salvation. 
Now, Lord, make her well in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. She's your child. Believe that. Amen. Come, sister. That old back trouble lady. Go on on your way rejoice and say thank you. Hallelujah. Come. In the name of the Lord Jesus, heal my brother. Bring it, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, heal my sister. Bring it, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the Holy Ghost is anointing now. Heal my brother. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, honey. In the name of Jesus Christ, may this girl be healed. Amen. Hallelujah. Come, sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the power of Satan leave the woman. Amen. Don't you believe just the same now for them as you do for the others? Sure you can believe it. If I tell you what's wrong with you, would it help you? All right? It's your back and your feet. It's a pinched nerve. You got somebody on your heart you're praying for. It's a friend that's paralyzed. That's thus saith the Lord. Now, did it help you? Don't believe it. Amen. See, just have faith. Believe. In Jesus' name, be healed. Amen. Just have faith. Don't stop. In the name of the Lord Jesus, be healed. Come, sister, believe. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Come, sister, believe it with all your heart. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus, be healed. Hallelujah. Can't you understand that's the Holy Spirit saying that? Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus, be healed. Amen. Come, sister, believe now. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus, be healed. You believe that? It left you right there. Now, sister, if it all had faith like that, it'd be all right. You're free now. Go. Come, sir. Look, you were sitting out a while ago rejoicing when I was preaching. That's right. I noticed you back there. A vision come on you when I said a while ago, if they just had this much faith, it was on you. You're suffering with a back trouble. You're suffering with a chest trouble. Got trouble in your feet. It was caused from a great fall you had. You was healed before you come in the line. Go on your road and rejoice to be happy. Come, sister, breathe. In Jesus' name, may she be healed. Amen. Go rejoice. Go back. Just leave now. All right. But she's made it. You believe she's going to be healed? I condemn this demon that's done this evil to the sister. May she go from here tonight and be a well woman to testify to the glory of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask her to leave. Amen. Now. Thank you, you see, every one of you, and give God praise. Oh, Lord God, heal these people these anxious represent. Heal the audience here. May Satan not be able to make one of them back, and may they ever will be completely healed. But out of here, Satan, I challenge you in the name of Jesus Christ that you take your healing away from you. Let's praise the Lord.